Nation. Wednesday is here. That means it's hump day. And we're going to talk a little bit of that or a little bit of crap. It's Fast for Crap Wednesday here at ManOutRadio.com, guys. We're going to talk a little bit about Jordan Love. Jared Goff. Is Josh Allen really unstoppable? Are the Miami Dolphins facades? What? We're going to talk a little bit about this and a little bit of that. It's Fan Open with Live Brawl Uncut. But first. And now, Mike's Thoughts. Guys, usually on our Mike's Thoughts here to start the day, we try to keep it lighthearted. We try to keep it fun. We try to keep it poking fun at people and myself and other people in general, right? But we have to get serious here, guys, on this Wednesday, January 17, 2024 at 10 a.m. We have to get serious, guys, because suicide is a real thing. Suicide is a thing that, unfortunately, many families, many people will experience in their life. Many people, many families will understand the the depressions and all that other stuff. And unfortunately, guys, suicide is sadly a part of our lives. And today, the NFL world lost another young athlete due to suicide. Now, I'm not going to go into the details because their details are very, very glim. And if you read reports, they're very conflicting reports. But, guys, if you ever need somebody to talk to, my inbox is always open. Hoffy's inbox is always open. Combs' inbox is always open. Luke G's inbox is always open. Guys, if you need somebody to talk to, talk to us. Reach out to us. It never hurts to talk. We're always there for you. Suicide is not the answer at the end of the day. But let's get into some NFL talk. Cue that intro. Are you ready for the best damn NFL show in the world? Man Hour Nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the Dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know what I'm talking about. Sports talking, what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talk about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, then listen some more. Oh, no, your station not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Then four in the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know. You know. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live off through your speakers. Go. And. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckhouser here with the man. I'll be short over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page. Of course, check out the blog section as well. And if you want to click on the watch link as well, watch some NFL football with the boys. Click on the link and you watch any NFL game that you want moving forward. Starting, starting this weekend, we'll have all the uh, divisional wild card games up there so you guys can jump in there, talk your stuff, have some fun, interacting with people like they're sitting with you right there on the couch. But 2024 NFL season, we will be streaming all the NFL games over there for you guys to sit back and enjoy. All you have to do is become a member at the uh, page. It's free. You just got to type in your email and then bada bing, bada boom. It is what it is. But we got to welcome some people in the chat here this morning. We got my man, John. People in the chat. This man is undefeated with his wild card picks. Congratulations. He says, up, Dwight Weiner. Weiner. I, I think it's Weiner. I don't know. What's up, John? <laughs> we got my man, Wayne G, in the pop as well. He says, I'm watching while typing at work. There you go. Don't be start talking stuttering, Wayne, because, you know, sometimes when I start to stutter, I uh, type stuttering too. So be careful. Sometimes that happens. John also says it's freezing in the mitten, waiting for the bucks. Freezing in the mitten, waiting for the bucks. Guys, did you hear what that reporter from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers asked uh, uh, Todd uh, Boyles? This reporter for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers says, how are you pre preparing for the cold when you travel to Detroit to take on the Lions this weekend? Todd Boyles with a straight face said, um, I'm... I'm pretty sure they play in a uh, dome. <laughs> Speaking of playing in a dome, my man Hoffy always plays in a dome in a special bubble to keep people from away from him. What is up, Hoffy? What's up, Michael Buckheister? What's up, Man Hour Nation? 
I uh, I just want to reiterate Buck's thoughts. You know, it's okay to ask for help. Like Buck said, we're all here. We all have the same problems, same struggles. It's always uh, it's always okay to lean on a friend. Much yeah. rather have you here than read about you in uh, in any sort of paper, obituary, etc. So please don't be afraid to ask for help. That is a hundred percent facts, hundred percent facts. And guys, uh, we do have suicide awareness prevention shirts there. It says stay tomorrow. Tomorrow needs you. That is over there in the merch uh, merchandise as well. Luke G is a big advocate of the uh, su- suicide prevention. So we made those shirts strictly for Luke, for Luke G and uh, yeah, uh, it is what it is. Caroline says, did you see what Tomlin is saying with the Steelers? I mean, of course he's staying with the Steelers. Why wouldn't he? Steelers are the best team at beating being mediocre. I mean, what mediocre? He could go to Dallas. What? Because he could go to Dallas. He could, but then the pressure would be on him, right? Then expect to win a Super Bowl at Pittsburgh. You're just expecting to be 500. Go to Vegas then. So you would destroy your legacy of the 500? It is what it is at the end of the day, guys. But, guys, it is Fact or Crap Wednesday here. We are going to sprinkle a little bit of fact. We're going to sprinkle a little bit of crap. We've been tearing, tinkering with the old interwebs out there, and we've been seeing what the people have been saying, and we want to determine whether it is a fact or is a crap. So, Hoffy, are you ready? Buckled up, shooting from the hip. Yes, sir. Pew, pew. Ant says it's cold as hell, y'all. It is cold as hell. My house is, or my... Studio B here out in the garage is nine degrees. Um, I came out here at seven, 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 seven o'clock this morning. Turned on the space heater at nine thirty. It was still like forty-five degrees. So, pretty cold. Pretty cold. It's nice and warm in my man cave. Well, sorry that I'm not rich and have like seventeen stories. My bad. Sorry. Four. Four stories. My bad. I have one story that goes from about hundred feet across, twenty feet wide. I believe they call it a single wide, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding. We have a beautiful house. My my wife does amazing to make our house feel like a home. But factor crap, guys. Obviously, we have seen Jordan Love do his thing all season long. There's been kind of criticisms about Jordan Love not being the guy, not being the next Hall of Famer quarterback to come to the Green Bay Packers. There's been rumors of like, hey, maybe just maybe the Green Bay Packers missed on Jordan Love, but then. Second half of the season rolls up. Jordan Love, the cheese curds went through his system. He finally got used to eating all that cheese, and he he, uh, excelled. He started to be one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL the last eight or nine weeks, if not the best quarterback in the NFL. And then he goes down to the Big D, and I'm not talking about the doors. I'm talking about Dallas, AT&T Stadium, and he lights up the show. He had a perfect QBR with about six minutes left in the game. They sat him out, he come back in, and he destroyed that perfect QBR, but it is what it is. Jordan Love does have one year left on his contract extension, going to make about $10 million in 2024. So, Hoffy, i got to ask you this question. Fact or crap, do the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love have to sign a long-term deal right now? Uh, For the sake of Green Bay Packers, they do. Um... But if I'm, you know, if I, before it gets astronomical numbers, um, I still think he's going to get paid quite a bit, even if they sign him now. But uh, if I'm Jordan Love, uh, I might uh, think about, you know, continuing to uh, to build on, you know, these last nine weeks and maybe cash in a little bit more. But uh, I do think he is the man, the myth, the legend for the Green Bay Packers, unlike uh, Combs, who says that he is a bust. But, yes, I would say it's a fact. Um that the Green Bay Packers need to sign him now. So the one thing about quarterbacks in the NFL, right? It is very hard, Hoffy, to find that franchise guy. You as a Patriots guy, since Tom Brady left, you guys have not found that franchise guy. You're probably going to look for him in the draft again. Uh, like like Atlanta Falcons still looking for their franchise guy after Michael Vick went to prison. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs finally found their guy. Raiders will never find their guy. So the list goes on and on and on. So when you find these, quote, franchise guys, you want to lock them in. You want to get them in a long-term deal. But the problem with the Packers, or sorry, the problem with the quarterbacks is that long-term deal is you're always going to be the next highest-paid guy, right? When we looked at Dak Prescott, or let's look at Patrick Mahomes' contract, 
the highest paid quarterback of all time. Not even six months go by Joe Burrow gets signed. Then Josh Allen gets 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 signed. Dak Prescott gets signed. And then Chiefs are like, oh, Mahomes is like the 10th highest paid quarterback in like in the NFL, like in the like in the in the NFL. We better rework his deal. Make him the highest paid. So for the validity of the Green Bay Packers to build a championship team around him, because they are very, very young. Most of their players are on rookie contracts, though, so there's going to be a lot of contracts coming up, Christian Watson, Dobbs, etc. You have to sign Jordan Love right now. This is 100% fact, because if you wait next year, he, if he balls out even more, you're going to have to pay him even higher because Dak's going to get paid this offseason. Tua's going to probably get paid this offseason. Brock Purdy's going to end up probably getting paid as well, right? So you have to sign him sooner than later because it's going to just cost you a hell of a lot of money, a hell, a hell of a lot more money in the end. So this is a hundred percent fact. Like I don't, like I, 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 I don't know any other way to say, it, but this is a fact, a hundred percent fact. And, yeah, um, and the, go ahead. The second half of the season, he's first in touchdowns, uh, first in passing touchdowns, first in total touchdowns, first in passing yards. So uh, yeah, I mean price tag is only going to go up yeah uh, you know I, especially hey I, i'm a 49ers fan but i'm shaking in my boots and i'm at, at this point you ask me right now i might be picking the uh the packers with how they played uh the 49ers secondary has looked pretty suspect i know we'll kind of get into you know the keys and, and keys and don'ts to uh winning and losing um uh, but right now i i don't find it to be a shock if the green bay packers come into santa clara and and pull off a win and, and that is going to significantly bump that price tag for jordan love well, and it's going to help your guys' Brock Purdy price tag maybe be somewhat reasonable, right? Uh, knock him out early, but it is what it is. We got to jump in the chat here. John says that it's a fact. It is a fact that Green Bay Packers have to pay Jordan Love right now. No question about it. Wayne G says crap. It says they don't have to sign Love, but they should. Extensions right now probably looking at five years, $225 million. Should... I, I, I love how Wayne G always uses those words. He's like, they don't have to. They got a year left on his contract, but they should. Right, and that's what we both just said. They don't have to, but they absolutely should. Therefore, it's a fact that Green Bay should. <laughs> should Jordan Love? Probably not. Yeah. But that said, Buck, real quickly, give me maybe your top three or top five quarterbacks. In the NFL, like right now? Yeah, just shoot it off the hip. Uh, you have to put Patrick Mahomes like up there, even though he's had a down year. You still got to put him yeah, up there, down year in his standards, right? Um, I yeah. would put Dak Prescott up there for okay. how much slander that he gets. He still puts up good numbers, right? Uh, okay. You have to put Josh Allen up there. I mean, yes, yeah. when he's bad, he's bad, but when he's good, he's really fucking good. Um, yep. And then this is where it kind of gets dicey as far as top five goes, but I, I would slide Jared Goff up there, Matthew Stafford, and yep. probably Kirk Cousins. One person that you did not put in there is Jalen Hurts. Yeah. And if I recall, I think he was the last quarterback to get paid. He's like one of the highest qu paid quarterbacks right now. So, Yeah. yeah uh, you know. We actually spoke on that, what, yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. He, he had but, one, one good year, and he got paid. I mean, yep. So I, I think that – kind of proof in the pudding that you probably need to sign Jordan Love now because he's yes he's great he's probably you know he's really really good right now I guess we can't say great you know yeah. you need more than nine games do you um do you though Hurts got paid off to, of to be put to be games. put up there with Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen uh, you, you know he's he's creeping up there real quickly but um you know and he probably would be up there you know if he has another nine games like that, but I think you kind of got to pay him now before it gets, gets, you know, before you get up to that. 500 million, half a billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> John yeah, I mean, says, we just uh, show he a tiny get what freaking a billion dollars or something. Getting like a million dollars a year for the next like 97 years or something. <laughs> John says, y'all need to see somebody ball about that Raider hate. It's not hate. It's just, it's just facts. Just facts. Jim says, Love came out firing in the last eight games, then stomped the Cowboys. See how far he goes in the playoffs before you hang the S on his chest. Listen, Jim, NFL media, NFL fans, NFL in general is the prisoner of the moment. And right now, the prisoner of the moment is Jordan Love. 
Jordan Love is the man, the meth, the legend. And Baker Mayfield is right behind him. Right? Like you, like you, like you have to give credit where credit is credit is due. And Jordan Love needs to get some of that credit, baby. My man Ann is in the chat. And he says facts. He's only going to get better and the price will only go up. Just look how long the Bengals took to sign Burrow. And I still think that Cincinnati Bengals messed up by signing Burrow. I, I mean, the man hasn't played a full season his whole NFL career. But that's a story for a different game, right? Uh, Jim says, where is Dak going to get paid? I don't know, Vikings, Cowboys. You could see him in the Lions next season. Dak's, Dak's, Dak's a winner. <laughs> Ant says in the next commercial, hashtag Walmart. Y'all, jeez. Uh, let's look at through some Who of the other. Katie Wilson, a fan of. Uh, she's a Chiefs fan. Uh, Why? I thought she said that we have matching hats. I was thinking she had a Patriots hat. I was all excited. Oh. So, Hoffy, I posted a clip of you talking about how the 49ers road to the Super Bowl got harder last night, right? Uh-huh. And 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 in that clip, you like and you said as a 49ers fan. People are like, how can you be a 49ers fan with the Patriots hat on? And, of course, I had to defend you. I'm like, what, you can't be a fan of two teams? Like, you, like just because you support, like, just because just, just I wear a Bengals shirt doesn't mean I'm a Bengals fan. It was $5 at Burlington Coat Factory. Of course I'm going to buy a Bengals shirt that has a hoodie on it. Did you see that? I've lived half of my life in San Francisco <laughs> and half in Boston. Yeah, 15 years, 15 years. I mean, yeah, you can be a fan of two teams. Like, it's not like. I'm 32, so 16. Okay, my bad. I mean, you're getting old. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then some guy, Hoffy, come at me because I was, quote, a Bears fan and I'm jumping from bandwagon to bandwagon. I'm like, what makes you think I'm a Bears fan? He's like, oh, you, you were wearing a Bears hat on a TV show or something. I'm like, uh, I don't own a Bears hat. I do own a Bears jersey because it was $10 at Burlington Coat Factory. But I think you're talking about Combs. And if you ever see me in a hat, it would have been a Cubs hat, which, Hoffie, me and you have the same uh, uh, Cubs hat. Is that uh, City City Connect hat? It's actually a really cool yeah. hat. Uh, I mean, yeah, I agree. Like, you can buy cool hats to wear I'm cool hats. I'm a fan of hats. Yeah. I guess moving forward, I need to wear my San Francisco hats. Uh, um like, <laughs> I'll do that. You know what? Better yet, hold on. All right. I'll even change my hat just for everybody now. Just, I'll go neutral. How's that? All right, there you go. Go ahead and put on a green hat, Hoffy. Uh, in the meantime, I'll go through the rest of the comments. Katie says, it's feeling fabulous to be 24 today. Well, happy birthday. Katie's 24 years old. Happy birthday to you, Katie. And John says, and Jared Goff is in that discussion. Very true. We're, 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 we're going to be talking about Jared Goff here momentarily and john says how about just a football fan true hashtag all red hats look like ho 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 and says that's true because i grew up a ravens fan die hard but my team in the nfc has always been the package of aaron Rodgers, jordy and charles woodson exactly you could be fan of several teams you can root for several teams right i mean i am a chiefs fan and I catch myself rooting for the Cowboys in the NFC. Hell, sometimes I catch myself rooting for the Packers because my wife's a Packers fan. So we actually went to Lambeau two years ago when the uh, when the old uh, uh, Packers and Lions played opening day. And Hoffy is back on here with his neutral hat. Let's see what he's got. He's got a Hurley hat. Boy, is that not Southern California? I don't know what is. Hurley and a red mustache. My man. <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on. Jared Goff was brought up in the chat here, and that is a perfect segue into our next segment. Factor Craft, though, guys. So Jared Goff led the Detroit Lions to their first playoff win since 1991 and their first ever NFC North Division Championship uh, since 2002, since the division was was like formed. Many people, including myself, thought that Jared Goff was out after this season. Win, lose, draw, indifferent. Jared Goff was had one foot out the door and it was being pushed out the door almost to make way for Hendon, Hendon Hooker. 
Jared Goff could have been the only quarterback ever to win the Super Bowl and find himself on a, on a new team next year. But now reports are starting to come out that Jared Goff is pretty much solidifying himself in Detroit. So, Hoffy, fact or crap, is Jared Goff the future in Detroit? I, I think at this point, regardless of uh, what happens the remainder of this playoffs, I think uh, Jared Goff has solidified him as 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 him for the Detroit Lions. I mean, uh, we kind of saw it. I'm sure everyone saw it, really. Um, him coming into the locker room after that that playoff win, and they're chanting Jared, Jer- you know, Jared, Jared, or Jared Goff, whatever they're chanting. But um, I think he has really embraced that city. Uh, and I think he is deserving of a contract with that team, um, and rightfully so. Um, I think he is, he's what? How how old is he now? He I want to say like 34, uh, 33. He's middle. He's only 29. Oh, he's only 29. Middle, middle of the road, basically, for an NFL player. Yeah. So, I mean, you could give him a... a, a a, a two three year deal i mean it, this could be a similar situation to the packers you could keep him have him kind of groom hen and hooker and three four years down the road maybe maybe make that switch um but i do think that he's going to get a contract i do think he'll stay with the detroit lions but i can absolutely see towards the end of that deal uh you know him kind of reverting back to the jared goff from the rams and you know maybe that's that contract hurts you in the end, but I do expect to see him get a contract extension and remain with the Detroit Lions through the future. So when I look at Jared Goff and we ask the question, factor crap, is he going to be the long-term quarterback for the Detroit Lions? Guys, this is a hundred percent fact. I don't understand why there is any question I like at all. I mean, I'm kicking myself right now. Like, why am I questioning that Jared Goff would not be the, future quarterback for the Detroit for for the Detroit Lions. He has done really, really good things in Detroit. He suffered a really, really bad season. Then they come back, right? And they suffer the first half of the season. They turn, turn, turn it around. Win like seven games in a row. Miss the playoffs. But then this year, they're biting kneecaps, doing all that stuff. Hoffa, you bring up a great point. Jared Goff is only 29 years old. Guess how old Hidden Hooker is? The man's 27 years old. Hennon Hooker's 27 years old, and Jared Goff is 29. So by letting Jared Goff go and bring in, in Hennon Hooker is is not like a like an age gap thing by like any means. Like at that point, you are just a player hater. You hate that Jared Goff is seceding, and now you're going to have to pay the man. That's what it comes down to. Jared, 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 Jared Goff went to the Super Bowl with the Rams. Did you guys all forget that? He led the Rams to the Super Bowl. I, if I'm not mistaken, that year, them and the Kansas City Chiefs scored like 109 points in a Monday night Monday night game. Like, it was just absolutely asinine. But, yeah, Jared Goff is the future, guys. There is no question about it. John says, fact, for the time being. Of course, the NFL is always, what have you done for me lately? What have you done for me now, right? Uh, Caroline says, fact. He is the future of the Detroit Lions. How how long is the future, Hoffie? Like, if if you were the Detroit Lions right now, what kind of contract would you be given, Jared Goff? I mean, I, I see Wayne G's comment. Crap, you know, they drafted Hendon Hooker to replace him. He's earned another year, but not a four or five year extension. I mean, I agree with him. I would like to only give Jared Goff like a two year extension and kind of see where we're at after that but i don't think jared goff will take a two-year extension he's going to want a four or five year extension yeah i mean i put my life on the line for you each and every day i've turned this franchise around granted it help from dan campbell but like i am the ringleader like give me some fruit to my labor right why do i why do i want another two-year prove it deal like no like damn it i proved it i don't know i mean i i would like to see what hendon hooker can do but un- but unfortunately, Hendon Hooker, sorry, he's 26 years old, and he's he's only going to have like a seven year NFL life. So I don't know. It is what it is. Yeah, we would like to see what Hendon Hooker is going to be, but 
he is part of the Detroit Lions, so they are seeing what they're getting. They're seeing him in practice, so they probably know what they're getting. Um, so maybe, but I, I just don't think that you're going to get the the window for the Detroit Lions is right now, right? Uh, and I don't, you know, and they have a lot of young players on that team, so I think you can afford to pay, you know, pay Jared Goff now because in a year or two, those players are going to be, you know. I'm on St. Brown. He's going to he's going to get a big contract. They're going to have, you know, they got Gibbs right now on, on his rookie deal. He's going to he's going to require a, a pretty hefty contract. Um, so I think that, you know, you can't expect Hendon Hooker to come in right now and get the same production or even similar production to what you've gotten from Jared Goff this year. So I think that you have to, you know, continue with Jared Goff. I do agree again with Wayne. I would like to only commit to him to one to two years, but you know, NFL players are are here to get theirs while they can. Yeah. And I don't think he'll take a two year two year deal. And I believe he is a free agent after this season as well. So he will kind of have his choice of where he wants to go. And Dallas Cowboys seem a pretty good pick to me if Dak is going to be leaving. Uh Ant says, I say, yeah, Hinden Hooker may have to sit another two years if Goff keeps playing how he's playing. And I do got the Lions beating the Bucks this week too. It's two playoff wins in a season. We'll slow it down, baby. The and then Ant also says the man just won them their first home playoff game since what? 1957? 1991, actually. 1991. And Barry Sanders didn't even play that. I think Goff is under contract through next year. Oh, is he? Okay. So through the twenty fourth season. Okay. So he will have another year to prove it, right? So there's your prove it year. Yeah. John says so you can, you know. Go ahead. Add a, a two-year extension on top of this 2024 season. I think that would be that would be right. I'd be I'd feel comfortable as a Lions, um, you know, fan base and as a Lions GM or whatnot. If I could just add on a two-year, you know, commit to him for three years. I don't want to commit to him for more than that. But again, if I'm Jared Goff, I, I I'm probably rolling the dice and and playing out the 2024 season and seeing what I can get. Right. I mean, like. If I'm Jared Goff and the way I played this season, give you your first playoff win and you don't want to extend me, give me a good deal, you want me to prove it to you one more year, that that just gives me two feet out the door. Like, yeah, I'm going to still play for you this year. I'm still going to perform. I'm still I'm still gonna do me, but I'm looking for greener pressures like just like 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 at that point. Cause it is a business at the end of the day. And Yes, we've been seeing kumbaya on the field, but behind closed doors, it's all business, baby. And I and I and I want that generational money. Um, so John says three years. Give give him a three year extension. Jim says you know where golf is golf is golf is is heading. We will also accept Minshew. <laughs> Jared Goff is not going to the Raiders. Nobody wants to go to the Raiders. Nobody, not even Antonio Pierce wants to go to the Raiders. He wants out. <laughs> My man David's in the house. He says, Chargers are in the house, baby. And he says, yes, I love me some golf. Pay the man, he says. Pay the man. We'll see. We'll see. Speaking of paying the man, Josh Allen has been paid. And Josh Allen has been on a tear as of late. He has put the Buffalo Bills on his back, ladies and gentlemen. And he says, follow me to the promised land, Buffalo, New York. So, Hoffie, we have seen it time after time after time. Again, Josh Allen running the ball. Josh Allen throwing the ball. It was when the Buffalo Bills were playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, I made a post on Facebook saying, this is why Josh Allen is unstoppable. When you don't hit him and tackle him, he runs for a 60-yard touchdown. When you try to hit him, he slides and he gets down. People took that as like a disrespect and a hating. I'm like, no, that like that that's just what makes him unstoppable. He is a great force. So, Hoffy, fact or crap, is Josh Allen the most unstoppable quarterback in the NFL? I mean, as far as a, a dual threat, I mean, you have to look at Lamar Jackson still. Um, but the one thing that, you know, Josh Allen has is he is a big a big body. So, um, you know, he can, over time, you're going to get tired and you're going to get sick of, you know, 
having to tackle him and, and hit him. But the one thing that I think he has over Lamar Jackson, which kind of might even give him a leg up, is his his arm. I mean, he can. He, we saw at this this first you know this playoff game. Um, you know they're they're playing in you know cold weather, and we we've seen it when they played against the Patriots that that freezing cold windy night. I mean, he's got a cannon. He can throw the ball. He can run the ball. Uh, he's hard to tack to tackle. Um, as is Lamar Jackson, as far as, you know, just, you know, he's got some, he's got some moves and he's, you know, nimble and and running around, but Josh Allen is just a a big dude. So um, I I think I would take Josh Allen over uh, Lamar Jackson at this point for, you know, the most dangerous quarterback. So I'm going to say fact. So Hoffie say that Josh Allen is the most unstoppable quarterback out there. And when we look at it, when we ask this factor crack question, is Josh Allen the most unstoppable quarterback in the NFL? I'm going to have to go with crap on this one, Hoffy. Uh, I know you guys are going to call me a home or whatever, but the correct answer is Patrick freaking Mahomes the second. Patrick Mahomes not only can do it with his legs, most of the time he chooses not to, but when he does run, he gets a first down, he gets out of bounds, and he saves himself. He can throw the ball wherever he wants, when he wants, how he wants, and when the throw isn't working, guess what? He can still throw the ball when he wants, when he wants, however he like he wants. Patrick Mahomes is the most unstoppable quarterback in the NFL. So I see your Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson does very, very well. He is starting to become a pocket passer maybe three or four years down the road with uh, with their new offensive coordinator. Oh, wait, he's going somewhere else because he's been a hot commodity. He's going to, like, Atlanta. So... Lamar Jackson is going to digress again next year. Sorry, Ant. Sorry, Ray Havens fans. And Josh Allen, he is a quarterback that beats himself. He beats himself over and over and over again. But Ant says Josh Allen just a bigger, faster version of Big Ben. Is that a disrespect comment or is that like a praise comment, Hoffy? No, I think that's a I think that's a fair fair comparison. And I mean I, I think right now it is between Mahomes, Jackson and, and Allen. But right now with just the three of them, the body of the work over these past, you know, nine games, and you could even put Jordan Love in if we're gonna talk about body of work over these last you know, last half of the season, this first week of playoffs. But just with, you know, the mission that Allen has been on, um, you know, winning what do you win? The last the last last five on their last six or seven yeah, after seven you know one, losing whatever, yeah. three out of four so you know i just think right now um you know he's he's on a mission whether or not they're gonna get through you know kansas city i i guess i would relay the uh my answer to we'll find out this this weekend between him and mahomes but uh you know lamar jackson's right there as well but i think right now if I am any of the, you know, the teams having to, you know, play defense this this weekend, the last person that I think I want to see right now is is Josh Allen. I can give you that. I mean, we can agree to a, a disagree on that one. But John says, so he's so unstoppable. Does that mean the Chiefs can't stop him? The Kansas City Chiefs won't have to stop Josh Allen. Josh Allen's biggest ability against himself is uh, he shoots himself in the foot. Over and over and over again. Even against the uh, Miami Dolphins, right? Playing for the division. Championships on the line. What does he do? Throw it. Th- throw, th- throws the interception in the end zone. I mean, without that return punt, we're talking a totally different ball game, I think, right? So Josh Allen was... That's a tie game. Yeah, I mean, it's just... We are talking to my We're the Chiefs traveling to Miami this weekend, more than likely. But... It is what it is. Jim says, crap. Josh Allen is not the most unstoppable quarterback. Caroline says, Chiefs better bring it all week long. I don't want the Bills to beat them again. Listen, Kansas City Chiefs have never lost to the Buffalo Bills two times in a season. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I, I don't, looking at Josh Allen's stats versus Kansas City, they beat them 20 to 17. He was 23 of 42. Yeah. Uh, for a 54% completion percentage, 233 yards, one touchdown, one interception. 
I think if you put up those numbers again against the Chiefs, it's not gonna it's not gonna end in a win. So, I think he's gonna have to put up numbers like what he did against Miami, what he did against you know. He didn't even really have that great of. A, I mean, they probably were running the ball a lot more against the uh, the Steelers, but he's gonna yeah. have to be in the you know the seventy to seventy nine percent completion percentage. I think he's gonna have to throw. You know, I I think that the run game is gonna be stopped. Um, you know, by the the Chiefs defense, so he's gonna have to throw for. 359 yards, you know, two touchdowns. I don't know that he'll be able to get away with, you know, if he can have a clean sheet, that's perfect. But any more than one interception, you know, he can't be having two turnovers in the red zone like he did against the Miami Dolphins. That's going to be a, a, an absolute backbreaker. Patrick Mahomes in that Chiefs offense will make you pay for that. And that strip sack as well. Uh, but looking at my script here, Hoffie, back from, uh, I believe it's September 2023 when the script was written here. Um, Tooney does line up again offsides, and the Buffalo Bills win the game in overtime because Tooney lines up offsides. Um, so the script is already written for the Buffalo Bills for this weekend. Uh, <laughs> and says, crap, it is Patrick freaking Mahomes. Let's go, baby. Caroline says, crap, as well. But John says, crap, Lamar Jackson's better QB. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I saw his stat this morning, Hoffie. Name me one quarterback in every playoff game that he has had had that has thrown over 200 yards and rushed for over 50 yards and a touchdown in every playoff game that he has played. Would you guess it would be Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, or Josh Allen? Mac Jones. Yeah, it's not Mac Jones. It's Josh, it's Josh Allen. So, I mean, stats kind of lie there, but, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, Mahomes is still the best quarterback in the league. Yes. And John says he's best at throwing his helmet. Patrick Mahomes doesn't throw his helmet. That's Travis Kelsey, John. So, uh, da -da -da -da. he doesn't throw his helmet. He just breaks it. Yeah. Well, he gets broke on him because it's, 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 that was a nasty hit, by the way. It looked really, really bad. Uh, and says Lamar will be even better next year. The man has turned into a pocket passer. That's super scary for the league. So Lamar Jackson has benefited from a great offensive coordinator, a great offensive mind that the Ravens picked up this season. And he has developed Lamar Jackson into a pocket quarterback, right? Into a actual quarterback, into a guy that could potentially be unstoppable. But the problem with that is with success equals promotions. What happened with the Philadelphia Eagles when they had success? Their offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator are gone. Ravens are probably going to lose their at least their offensive uh, coordinator, if not their defensive coordinator as well. So hopefully Lamar can take what soak up all the knowledge that he can now and execute it into next season. And hopefully they do get a better offensive coordinator next year. And John said it's a quarterback. Nobody cares about a quarterback. 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 We're talking about quarterbacks. Yeah, we're talking about quarterbacks. Speaking of quarterbacks, Tua. Hoffy is the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. And all season long, the Miami Dolphins have been riding kind of sky high. Top five in the power rankings week after week after week. Super Bowl talk, MVP talk for Tua and Tyreek Hill. But the last part of the season, they kind of fell off the wagon there, Hoffy. They were up three games in the division with five games low. They end up losing the division, getting second place, getting trounced in the first round of the playoff as well. So when we look at the Miami Dolphins, Hoffy, fact or crap, were the Miami Dolphins frauds all season long? I mean, they beat one team with a winning record. Um, so I think that kind of is, is proof in the pudding. Uh, you know, and, and I, I love me some Tua. Uh, you know, I liked him at Alabama, even though I'm not a huge Alabama lover. I just, I, I've always, you know, liked his game, but you know, I, I think if you put Patrick Mahomes on that, you know, Miami Dolphins team, uh, they put up better offensive numbers. I think if you put um, Tua on on Kansas City or Tua, I think if you switch Tua with any of the quarterbacks that we just discussed, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Kansas City Chiefs, all three of those guys put up better numbers than Tua would with that offense. And I think all three of those teams would decline with Tua as their quarterback. So 
Um, yes, I'm going to say it's an absolute fact that the Miami Dolphins were frauds this year. Yeah, and uh, piggybacking on everything that you said, if the Miami Dolphins are frauds all season long, and to be honest, Javi, I like the construction of the Miami Dolphins offense and defense. Their defense, granted, they were riddled with injuries all season long. We get especially, especially the second part. They, they're they down to like their eighth or ninth string linebacker at this point. They're picking Justin Houston and uh, Bruce Irving literally off the streets, right? So we get it. But I do like the way the offense is constructed. They have a two-headed monster in the backfield. They have a nice little receiver core. You can probably get Chase Claypool out of there, send him to the uh, uh, UFL. But Tua kind of fixed that system really, 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 really well. But the one thing I do not like about the Miami Dolphins, honestly, is their coach. I do not like Mike McDaniels as their coach. Their play calling, offensive uh, play calling, was suspect the last seven, eight, nine weeks of the season when – when it's third and one and you're throwing a wide out route to Tyreek Hill and it gets in like gets incomplete, why are you doing that? You have a two-headed monster in the backfield that you can if if you cannot get one yard rushing, you shouldn't be in the in the NFL. Let's just be honest. Let's call it a spade a spade. You can even run an option there with you know a QB option. Yeah. Run he was thickened up. He can take those hits now. Yeah, you can't call him fat. Uh I didn't call him fat. I called him thick. Well, you can't call him thick. He's Samoan. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, run the RPO, run the option, run something. Do not stick to a a out route from the right hash, throwing it to the left hash. That's a 60-yard pass or 40-yard pass that, 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 that you're try, 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 trying to throw to make one yard. Absolutely stupid. I think Mike McDaniels was the biggest fraud basically ever, right? I mean, you can like his charisma. You can kind of like his... Uh, Oh, that's it for the interview? Well, everything about Mike McDaniels, I hate. I want to punch that guy in the mouth every time I see him. Every time he opens his mouth on freaking hard knocks, I just want to hit him in his mouth. Like, dude, go vape some. Go vape some. I'm wearing, hang out with the skater boys from California wearing their Hurley hats. Like, just shut up. Hey. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, Don't it is a fact. put me in that, fine. you know, high school class clown that you want to beat the shit out of. I was not him. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like... I don't want to beat up Mike Mike McDaniel because that that would be oh, so absolutely that would be very junior high. Let me, me you want me to pull up the conversation? What conversation? I'm pretty sure you said he's that class clown that you know annoys the hell out of you and you just want to beat the shit out of. I'm pretty sure. I said that in confidence, word, coffee. I said that in confidence that we would be private. <laughs> no, but <laughs> yeah, but seriously though, this Mike McDaniel's is the reason the Miami Dolphins failed this season, and for all the coaches that are out there. Uh, Mike Vrabel, Bill Belichick, Pete Carroll, Jim Harbaugh, uh, possibly Mike McCarty. Mike McDaniels might be on the hot seat. Ha, 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 Do you think he's on the hot seat at all? I don't think so. I, I would, uh, you know, now that you've brought up the name Harbaugh, I think he would be a good fit um, it, it, with Miami. Uh, you know, a similar offense. You know, he. I think he could do some some wonders with that uh with that offense um but no i i don't think that uh josh um I, or excuse me mike is on the uh the hot seat at this time so this comment here i'm very confused about J john says cold weather teams agree but warm weather is a different thing john i love you like a brother or fuck you like a sister but what are you talking about <laughs> Do you have any idea, Javi? No, I, I don't know what he's talking about half more than half the time that he's cold talking. weather teams agree. Agree that if you have one yard to go that you should run the ball and warm weather and warm weather teams think they can pass the ball with one yard, like like is that what we're referring to? Like I I don't know. I got nothing. Hoffy, any closing thoughts before we head out today, man? Uh, no, what are we doing tomorrow? Are we doing uh, keys to win for the NFC teams, AFC teams? Well, we can you do know, that Friday. AFC, or, NFC. or hear me out, we do have Thursday and Friday. Do you want to yep. do AFC one day, NFC one day, or, or, or do you want to do them both in one day? Yeah, that's, one that's, what I was, that's what I was thinking. Okay. That's... So, in the chat, guys, do you want to do NFC tomorrow or AFC? We'll give you guys a minute to respond. And if you don't don't respond, we'll let Hoffy pick, and he's going to pick the UFL. 
No. <laughs> XFL. No, they combined. Hoffy is called the UFL now. XFL and the oh, AFL join. And as long did. as 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 long as Dwayne the Rock Johnson still is the man, the myth, the legend, and in charge, I'm um, I'm all about it. I honestly, I think he could probably suit up for some of the teams still and, and put up a uh, put up some some hurt and uh, why? Because he's big. Did Did you see him in college? He was terrible. Yeah, but he wasn't as big in college. Oh, so steroids help, huh? He, yeah, absolutely. Steroids and some protein shakes and being Samoan and you know everything yeah. else that yeah. That and the needle done. and the needle in the butt, but whatever. So we're split right now. We have AFC and NFC. And Ant says save save AFC AFC for Friday. So we're doing NFC. NFC tomorrow it is, boys and ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're doing AFC breakdown tomorrow. We got the four- ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We of got all the. Ages. Got the 49ers take, take on the Packers and the Lions take on the Rams. Key to victory is coming tomorrow. We'll talk about and dive deep into those playoffs. Hoffie, send us out.